Welcome back to Real Estate 101. I'm your host, Joe Tercera, and today we're going to continue our discussion on family law and talk a little bit about moving with children. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by John Schumann of Devery Smith Frank LLP. John, welcome back to the show. It's good to be back. So, John, I want to start today's show and talk about moving with children. And often, when a couple separates, uh, they want to move off on their own uh, as soon as possible. Uh, is there a problem with doing that? Well, if you're a parent of a child and you're splitting up with another parent, before you move out, you have to really think about what kind of relationship you want with your children going forward. Because if you just move out, Ontario law has this principle called de facto custody. And what that basically means is that the parent who moves out cedes custody to the other parent. So the parent who stays behind with the children is the custodial parent. Okay. And once that person has that, those rights and responsibilities, they can be hard to change. So. That's one of the reasons people stay together, even though they separate and their, you know, their marriage or their relationship is over, is because they want to stay involved with their children's lives and they don't want to give up that role as a custodial parent. Right. Now, can, can, can one of the parents move out with the children in order to, I guess, uh, obtain custody or primary custody of the kids? Well, you can, but whether it's a good idea is, is another question. Judges really don't like it when parents act unilaterally or do anything to deprive the other parent of the relationship with the children. So moving out with the children is going to have the other parent very rapidly going to court and saying, hey, 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 I'm a parent too and I want to be involved with these children's lives and that parent moved out and is depriving me of my relationship with the children. And that is a argument that a lot of judges will listen to and they'll be very concerned if a parent you know, unilaterally takes the children away. Is there any point in time when a parent can move out with the children? Well, a parent can move out on their own, with, take the children with them, when there's some danger. When there's domestic violence, that either against the children or against the other parent. And there's an argument that can be made where the relationship in the house is so bad and the children are exposed to so much fighting that it's hurting the children. So in everybody's best scenario, I guess, the moving out would be... That's right. And usually when you have, you're at a place where a parent's moving out unilaterally, a children's aid society is involved because there's so much conflict or the children have been exposed to either physical or emotional conflict that's really harming them. That's when it's okay to move out. Now when is it time for the parents to move into their new homes and is there anything they need to consider? Well before a parent moves into the new, their new home, they want to have an agreement with the other parent as to what the parenting arrangements are going to be. And that usually involves having a parenting plan. Parenting plans are not that complicated. All they say is who's going to make the decisions for the children and where the children are going to live and when are they going to live there. So when are the children going to live with one parent, when are the child going to live with the other parent. And those are not too difficult to work out if the parents are along, able to get along at all. If they have real difficulty sorting it out, there are lots of professionals who are involved who can step in, you know, uh, social workers, psychologists, people who help parents develop parenting plans that can step in and sort out those issues so the parents can move out. And once that plan is in place, then there's no prejudice anymore, no legal prejudice to move right. out because you've established in writing somewhere what your Some rights. grounds, yeah. That's right. Okay, so let's say one of the parents wants to move far away from the other parent. What happens? Well, that's when you get into some problems because, and how, how far away it is makes a big difference. But when you have had two parents who have been always involved in the children's lives, and that's getting to be more and more common, then one parent moving far away creates problems with the other parents seeing the children. Now, if you have a traditional sort of relationship, uh, parenting relationship where there's one parent who is primarily responsible for the children and the other parent helps, then it's not as big an issue because if the parent who is going to move far away is not the primary parent, then that parent has the responsibility to get themselves back to see the children as to whatever the agreement was. Right. If the parent who's usually looking after the children moves farther away or wants to move far away 
and that's going to throw the whole parenting plan that they've agreed to into disarray, then there can be problems. Okay, does it make a difference what the agreement or court order says? Well, if the parents have worked out a parenting plan, they have an agreement as to how they're parenting the children. And at some point in time, they agreed that whatever their plan was, that was in the best interest of the children. If they had to go to court to have that decided, then at some point a judge decided what was in the best interest of the child. So if the court order or agreement says the children should be with parent A on Monday, Tuesday, and parent B on Wednesday, Thursday, then either the parents themselves or a judge thought that was in the children's best interest. And if one parent's going to move away that's going to change all that, then a judge or the parents can have to look at, is this really in the children's best interest? It starts again when you, one parent says they're going to move and says, I've got to change. I want this, what's in the children's best interest is going to change as well. And so the court will look at it again as to what's in the children's best interest. But what is what was in the children's best interest before right. is going to heavily impact on that. Okay, so let's say, let's go back to that. Let's say one parent wants to move far away. What do they need to do? Well, the first thing they need to do is they need to, as, as soon as they're even thinking about it, tell the other parent. They, a parent cannot just move like from Ontario to New Brunswick with the children and, and yeah. say, oh, we'll throw this out later. That's not going to fly. You're going to get in, the other parent's going to be in court really fast and it's going to create a whole lot of upheaval. That judge may order the children back to Ontario, so they're moving back and forth. It'll be a very nasty situation. Right. So what you want to do is you want to tell the other parent with enough time so you can talk about it. I mean, there are alternatives to having the current plan. If one parent has to move, you can sort it out so that the parent who's not moving gets all the holidays and all the Christmas vacation and all of the school vacations and long weekends. So they spend as much time. But if you're not talking about that well in advance, you're not going to sort it out. It may, be, it may be that the second parent, or the parent who's not moving, is so involved in the children's life that it would be terrible for the children to move. And if that's the case, the parent who is going to want to move is going to have to go to court and ask for permission, and it's going to take some time for that to unfold. So if you think you have a job opportunity on the other side of the country, don't wait until the week before your job starts, because you may up, end up with a judge telling you you're not moving and losing that job. Are parents usually allowed to move away from their former spouses with the children? It's difficult to say what usually happens. Every case depends on its own facts, and judges have allowed many parents to move and told many parents they cannot move. It really depends on what the judge who is hearing the case on that particular day thinks is in the best interest of the children. If it's in the best interest of the children then they, to move, then they move. And it doesn't matter what's in the best interest of the parent, it's what's in the best interest of the children. Right. Sometimes the best interest of the children are tied to the best interest of the parent because they have a really close relationship and if one parent has to move, the children are gonna lose that relationship. But that's the way the judge looks at it, what's best for the children, not what the other parent's reasons are for moving. All right, so for today's final question, uh, what is, if any, a good reason for a parent to move away with kids? Well, the usual reasons that uh, where moves are allowed is because a parent has a new job and the new job is going to pay substantially more or has better opportunities for advancement or it can create a much better lifestyle for the children. Right. And when a parent is going to have that new job and they're going to be much happier in that new job, then the parent being happier usually means the children are going to be happier. So that's a good reason uh, to move. Sometimes it, if the new parent is in a serious relationship and that their partner has a new job or their partner wants to move away, then the judge will allow the move. But in that case, it has to be a serious, committed relationship. It can't be someone that the parent met two weeks ago and thinks, oh, this is the love of my life, now I want to move away with them. Right. No, this has to be a permanent relationship because it doesn't make any sense to expose children to relationships that are going to... Maybe temporary. Maybe temporary, right. especially the children are going to be moving around. And counterbalancing all of that is always how strong is the parent's relationship with the, the uh, parent who is staying behind. And if the parent is staying behind has a really close relationship with the children and they do lots of things together, then the judge may say, you know, that relationship is so important, even though that new job is really good, I can't allow the move. So that's another big consideration when it comes to looking at the best interests of the children and whether to allow the move. Of course, 
if the parents are allowed to sort out a circumstance or circumstances where both parents can have a good relationship with the children going forward, then the judge is going to allow the move, right. more likely. So if the move is not that far, or if the parents can say, well, instead of you having this time, I can give you all this other time in exchange, then the children won't miss out on their other parent, or hopefully won't miss out as much. And that may counterbalance allowing the move. All right, John. Thanks very much for coming on today's show. You brought a lot of good information. Okay, thanks. It was a pleasure. All right. If anybody has any more questions, they can get in contact with John Schumann at Devery Smith Frank LLP. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Joe Tresera, and we'll see you next time.